Aki and her friends are playing soccer on the playground. The score is 3-3. Jupe, a bully, pulls the hair of one of Aki's teammates, and she falls to the ground. So Aki runs to Jupe, pushes him off the ball, and goes to score at the opposite end. But Jupe isn't having it. He says the goal doesn't count because Aki fouled him. So Aki tells him that he fouled first by pulling someone's hair. Jupe responds that 8th graders don't cry. Aki's friends try to pull her away from the confrontation with Jupe, but she's not liking it. She calls him a sore loser and gets the other kids to laugh at him. Back in class, Aki is sitting with her friends when one of them shows her a drawing of Jupe with a ball on his head. Aki shows the picture to some of her other friends, and they laugh right as their teacher, Ina Stevens, walks into class and asks why there's been another dispute on the soccer field. Aki says it's because someone's always trying to cheat. Mrs. Stevens says soccer's a team sport, and they won't win anything if they don't play together. Jupe rolls his eyes at the comment. When their teacher asks if he has anything to add, Jupe says that they're not playing real soccer and that girls don't know how to play soccer. Aki didn't like that comment, who says it's discrimination. She knows how to play soccer, and she intends to go pro. Mrs. Stevens asks why Jupe thinks girls can't play soccer, but he only says that girls are different. So at dinner, Aki tells her parents about the day, but she's still angry about Jupe's comment. Her mother asks about a bruise on her arm, and she says she got to play in soccer, and her mom complains about Aki always having an injury or another. The following day, Jupe shows Aki a picture of a woman in a bra and underwear. In a flash, Aki takes the phone and shows everyone Jupe's new girlfriend. Jupe chases Aki around the class, and when he finally gets his phone back, Mrs. Stevens sees him with the phone and confiscates it. Jupe, in anger, challenges Aki to a fight after school. Aki accepts the challenge and meets him after school. The fight is evenly matched until Mrs. Stevens breaks it up. However, Jupe manages to give Aki a bloody nose. Despite her efforts to stop the bleeding, Aki is still bleeding hours after the fight. Eventually, her mother reluctantly takes her to the doctor. Now, the doctor at the office asks how often Aki has nosebleeds and asks about her bruises. Before we go on, like the video, smash the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to get that full day of good luck. He sees that she's been pushed recently. He also asks if she has fainting and dizzy spells, but Aki shrugs. The doctor says he'd like to do a blood test. After school, Aki walks home with Elsie, her best friend when she sees her parents. They tell her that they have to go to the hospital because of the results from her blood test. In the oncology department, Aki worries about the somber mood of her parents. She asks them what oncology means, but her mother doesn't answer. Aki's father, meanwhile, wants to tell her, but her mother's adamant. All fed up, Aki leaves the elevator, approaches the first medical personnel she sees, and asks what oncology means for a school project. Oncology is for cancer. Dr. Vanderlaan tells Aki to call him Dr. Mustache, trying to relax her. She asks if she has cancer, and the doctor says it's possible. Aki asks if she's going to die, but instead of answering, the doctor says 80% of children with cancer get cured, and she asks about the other 20%. The doctor explains to her using toys and truck soldiers to illustrate what leukemia is. She calls the bad blood cells hooligans, and asks why they're in her blood. Well, the doctor doesn't know, but he'll get some of her bone marrow to determine what the hooligans plan to do. Aki's parents stay with her throughout the whole procedure, and when she awakes, she asks if she can go home, but the answer is quick, not yet. The results of the test confirms that Aki does have leukemia, devastating her parents. Being denied to go home, Aki is devastated by the news, believing this is an important year. The doctor introduces her to Afida, a nurse who gives her a tour of the oncology ward and introduces her to other cancer patients. In school, the teacher asks the class what they know about leukemia. The class, glum from their absence of their friend, don't know how to answer. Back at the hospital, Aki meets Larissa, a cancer survivor who's about to go home. Afida gives Aki her courage beads. Back in the school, Ibrahim asks if Aki is dying. Elise says that, if she is, they should pray for her. 
The teacher tells Elise that not everyone believes in God, but anyone can send a key wishes any way they can. Ibrahim asks the teacher if her husband died of cancer, which he did. Then she assures him that that was a long time ago, and doctors are much better now. She says most children overcome cancer, and one of the students concurs, saying that her niece had cancer and became healthy again. The students ask how a key would cope without writing exams. Joup says that a key is the only girl that can play soccer, and her absence will affect their chances at the tournament. But the teacher assures them that a key will be back before then. So after a key's first chemotherapy, the doctor asks how she feels. At first she says it's okay, then admits that she is feeling bad. The doctor says it's to be expected after chemo. A key asks if she can go back to school because training for the football tournament is starting soon. And as she's talking, she throws up. She admits to the doctor that she misses her friends. But the doctor says he understands. Her immunity is low, so she can't receive visitors. Back in school, Mrs. Stevens tells the class that they can visit a key, but they should all paint her something. Ibrahim paints a picture of a key on a bike, promising to take her on a ride. Elise wishes her a quick recovery because life isn't fun without her. So in her hospital room, a key reads the notes from her friends and teacher. She tries to come up with some kind of adequate reply, but she can, even after several tries. Afida walks in, and they talk about her confusion. Afida also tells her that if she's ready, it might be time to cut her hair. And with her mother present, Afida starts cutting Aki's hair. It's as short as a boy's. And when she looks at it in the mirror, Afida asks her if she likes her new hair. And she shrugs and says it's okay. With Afida's help, she writes a note to her class. She thanks them for the messages, tells them about her medical procedures, asks about the training, and informs them that she might be allowed to have visitors soon. Lorenz, Elise, and Ibrahim are chosen to be the first people to visit her. Joup, masking his disappointment, kicks the ball away. When they arrive, Lorenz presents her with a drawing, and Ibrahim gives her a ball. The visitors are still with a key when the doctor comes to see her sharing the good news that the number of hooligans in her body is reducing. So Aki's excited about the news, believing that it means she's cured and could go back to school. But the doctor tells her that it's just the first half, and they have to continue fighting. When the doctor leaves, she talks about the upcoming tournament with her friends. She tells them who she thinks should play. But when Aki says that she wants to play too, her mother shuts her down. Aki's not understanding why her mother doesn't want her to play when the doctor says that she can do anything she wants. To diffuse the tension, Mrs. Stevens takes her mother out of the room. And while they're gone, Aki and her friends plan to matchmake Mrs. Stevens and their soccer coach. Aki is with the nurse in Afida, who want her to try out different wigs. Reluctantly, Aki allows herself to be convinced about the idea of wearing these wigs, but she rejects them all. Afida tells her that they'll make a wig with her hair color. And she ends up agreeing. Later on, Aki is entirely bald. Her parents pack her things while she's juggling the ball Ibrahim gave her. The doctor comes into the room and asks if Aki's nervous. When she says she isn't, he tells her that no one knows what to expect, but she has to protect herself at all times. So she agrees, and he tells her that, though she's leaving the hospital, her treatment isn't yet complete. She still has to come back and finish up. Aki agrees and says that Dr. Vanderland is the best doctor in the world. Aki's parents end up taking her back to school. And she's nervous at first, but her friends welcome her with a song. So that she won't feel out of place, her classmates all wear hats in solidarity as she refuses to wear a wig. The class ends up holding a fashion show, showcasing their caps. Aki goes on last. When she takes her cap off, they're stunned in silence as soon as they see her bald head. But Lorenz makes a joke. The others laugh and then there's no more awkwardness. Now on the playground, the team plays soccer when a key suddenly collapses. They usher her to a bench. Lorenz comes to sit with her and she tells him that she liked the drawing he sent her and that he should make a comic. Joup comes over and teases her about her bald head, but Ibrahim confronts him and says that he should take back that comment. Now back in her room, Elise asks Aki why she hung Joup's picture along with the others. Aki says Joup is also in the class, but Elise calls him an idiot. Elise tells Aki that Lorenz wants to kiss her, 
so she tells Elise to kiss Lorenz instead. Confused, Elise asks why a key is so moody, and she answers angrily, saying that Elise is constantly interfering. In the end, a key asks her to leave. On the next day, a key and her class resume their new school. One of the rules of the school is that no caps are allowed. One of the seniors asks a key to take off her hat and flips it off when she doesn't respond. Joop stands up to him, and the rest of the class joins in. The boy puts the cap back on a key's head and apologizes. And as they're leaving for home, a key thanks Joop for standing up for her. She invites him to the hospital as she's going in for a second visit. Joop rushes off. A key ends up apologizing to Elise, and she says the drugs are making her act strangely. Now, on a key's second visit to the hospital, she makes a bet with the doctor. If he can't make her better, he has to take off his mustache. And the doctor agrees. When it's time for her friends to come and visit, Elise, Lorenz, and Ibrahim come with Carol, a key's cat. A key ends up having a great time with her friends, but when they're about to leave, Lorenz gives a key another drawing. The results from her second round of chemo show that the cancer is regressing. She pleads with the doctor to let her go with her class on a field trip. Her mother doesn't want her to, but Aki shows the doctor that she's strong enough, and he reluctantly allows her to go on the condition that she doesn't strain herself. And when Aki gets home, she and her mother fight, with her mother insisting that she's going on the field trip with Aki. But Aki doesn't want that and storms out of the house. Eventually, her father negotiates a truce, and Aki and her mother go on the field trip together. Now at the field trip, the children play a game of hide-and-seek. Key climbs up a tree to hide, and Mrs. Stevens, who's the one seeking, finds everyone except the key. But a key has vertigo and can't come down from the tree. Mrs. Stevens divides the class into groups to find her. Joop finds her in the tree and climbs up to meet her. Step by step, Joop helps a key get down. At the bottom of the tree, Joop apologizes to her for not visiting her in the hospital. He says he hates hospitals because his younger brother died after spending a year there when he was in third grade. Because of what happened the previous day, Aki can't join the rest of her class, so Joop goes to the room to see her. He asks her to come and watch the training if she's strong enough. Sure enough, Aki comes to join him. But as Joop passes her the ball, she collapses on the field. Aki's father comes to pick her up, and she says that she can't make the tournament. Elsie should play in her place. Meanwhile, Lorenz gives a key a comic he drew titled Super A Key. At the hospital, the doctor tells a key that the cancer cells have spread to her brain. A key confesses that she climbed a tree against his orders. But the doctor tells her that that's not the reason the cancer's back. She says she doesn't want to die. And the doctor reminds her that he is the best doctor in the world. She undergoes more tests and treatments. Mrs. Stevens discussing her progress with the rest of the class the whole way. The discussion shifts to the students' personal beliefs. Some, like Ibrahim, believe in heaven. Others believe in reincarnation. When Mrs. Stevens asks Joop what he believes in, he says nothing. He says the dead stay dead. A key is starting to look pale now. When the doctor comes into her room, she notices he's without a mustache. It seems to drain all hope out of her. And back in her room, she asks Safita if it hurts to die. She tells her that it doesn't, and gives Aki a big hug. In school, Mrs. Stevens tells the class that Aki can't play in the tournament. She asks for volunteers to replace her, and Elise volunteers, per Aki's wishes. Joop asks if Aki can come and watch, but Mrs. Stevens says she's too weak. Even when Joop asks if they can get an ambulance to bring her, Mrs. Steven tells him no. Undeterred, Joop and Lorenz go to the hospital to speak with the doctor. While he agrees it would be an excellent gift for a key, he says she's too weak to be moved. Then, Joop gets an idea after seeing some people play on the field beside the hospital. Why not transfer the final there? Joop, Lorenz, and the others make the arrangements. So Joop, Lorenz, Elise, and Ibrahim move a key to the window overlooking the field at the hospital. Joop gives her his phone to talk to the others, and a key gives him her necklace when it's just the two of them. Finally, they kiss. 
Ibrahim calls her and gives her a detailed account of the match between FC Oncology and a key FC, as a key and her parents watch from the window. Joop scores, a key celebrates with him, and when she closes her eyes, her spirit leaves her body. She looks down on the celebrating players, then ascends into the sky. In school, Joop stands in front of a memorial for a key, crying. Ibrahim tells him that 8th graders don't cry. Joop laughs before putting on Aki's necklace. FC Aki plays in the tournament. Everyone from the hospital's there, as are her parents. All Aki's friends play, and Elise scores the winning goal. They celebrate, and the movie comes to an end, just as Aki would want it. The movie 8th Graders Don't Cry was released in 2012. Produced by Bishker Productions, Wrinkle Film, and Evangelisch Omrop. Those who starred in the film are Hannah Obik, Niels Verkusen, and Fiona Livingston. If you were a key, would you have picked Lorenz or Joop? Post your comments with the hashtag CinemaRecap.